Hi everybody, it's Lorraine Murray here from um, the Teach Children Meditation Campaign and Connected Kids and the author of the book Calm Kids as well. Um, I'm just going to do a short video today about working with children who have disruptive behaviour because somebody emailed me today asking about that. Um, the question was really about a boy who was in um, first grade who was being quite disruptive and also was, uh, had a habit of hitting um, other children. And um, first of all, when we think about meditation, we, we have to consider that meditation is great because it lends itself to the needs of an individual. So it's a very personal journey. It's not something we use to fix anybody or certainly not fix children. And when I was reading the email, there was this feeling I got that the not the teacher who'd sent it to me, but the colleague who'd asked her advice was wanting to do something to fix this boy and to change him and to, to make him behave. And I can appreciate it's very difficult when you've got a large group of children. Obviously, you want that to happen. But meditation isn't going to be a, a panacea for all ills. It's not, it's not just going to sort this wee boy out so that she can have a peaceful class. If anything, it would be a really good idea for that teacher to sit in meditation with the idea of this small boy and kind of tap into her intuitive um, guidance, for once for a better word, that would help her to maybe see life through his eyes and to kind of get a feel for how challenging it is for him um, when he's behaving this way. It's not, people don't, and of all ages, people don't react because they want to hit out at people and react. They're doing it because they usually feel quite fearful, they feel um, under attack, um, they feel overwhelmed, um, and they certainly don't feel very emotionally strong. So that would be my first guess, even though I don't know this wee boy, um, my first guess at what he's kind of going through. And Usually when children are behaving that strongly and that disruptively, there's, there's something involved, particularly the stress response. They have a, a kind of really strong reaction to life because their stress response is on full alert and it hasn't really learned how to switch off. So meditation can obviously help with that, but it's not going to fix this wee boy and cure him in the way that I think this teacher really wanted it to happen. But it would be a good start. And um, the teacher who sent the email was asking me, well, you know, I, my feeling is I've been doing your online course and been enjoying working with my children in class. My feeling is that maybe he needs to get in touch with his breath and his body. What do you think? And um, of course, I think this teacher is right. I think that's exactly what she needs to encourage um, this child to do because he is totally oblivious to the tension that he holds in his body and in his breath as well. And if we teach children how to get into their bodies, to really notice what's going on in their body, and to teach them some techniques with the breath that helps them have more management over their breath, um, it means that they don't need to react to every situation around them, that they'll actually learn how to, um, to tap into what their body's feeling and use their breath very constructively to help to reduce the stress response that's starting to build up and to escalate and to help bring it back down. And maybe also to articulate what the feeling is or the emotion is. What we feel inside is sometimes how we express on the outside, but it's because we find it difficult to put into words what's going on, and children are no different from that. So her idea of having them lie on the ground um, the class of children, including this wee boy, and really getting into their bodies and the sense of touch with the earth and, and getting into their breath, I think was a really good idea by this teacher. I also think that maybe placing something on the tummy, a teddy bear or a cushion or something that gives some weight on the body, helps children of that age, a first grader, so about six years old, to come into their body and be much more aware of it and to notice naturally Curiously, how interesting it is when this teddy bear or cushion rises up with the breath and rises down. And that in itself is helping to distract away from some of the tension that they're feeling. It also helps to work the diaphragm, which is an area of muscle in the body that automatically kicks in when we're asleep. And um, the good thing about the diaphragm is that it sends a relaxation signal to the brain. So 
Um, if we're encouraging children to work with their diaphragm and take deeper breaths, they're naturally sending a relaxation signal to the brain, which is overriding the stress signal that's trying to bring on the stress response. Meditation is, you know, great in many ways, but particularly because it's a, it's a bespoke approach to the needs of children. So it would be a good idea, as I said earlier, for the teacher or if you're in that situation, for you to sit in meditation and get some insights, some meditative insights into what you could do to support that child. Um, but it is remembering that meditation is a bespoke experience. And the, if we're trying to just deliver a meditation that just, you know, meets all the needs of the children, that's fine if the children aren't facing any kind of particular difficulty. But if children are facing difficulties and we stick them in a class full of children who are not, and we're trying to teach them a meditation and hoping that that will calm them down, it, in my view, that may be quite unlikely. And in fact, what would be better is to maybe give that child some one-to-one -one, uh, time teaching them some breathing, relaxation or meditation techniques because that will be really constructive so that when they do come back into class and join the group meditation, they've got some really good tools that they've already established that they can use to help. So I thought it was an interesting question and I just wanted to share it with you because I know some of you do come across um, some children who have got some real disruptive behaviours and you're not quite sure what to do. So uh, maybe that, that will help you get started. Um, I do do one-to-one -one sessions online or, uh, through Skype or by the telephone if that was of interest, if you've got some more deep-seated um, questions. My schedule is getting so busy these days that it's going to be quite difficult to just fire off an email to people every so often. Um, and I don't mean to be rude, it's just so incredibly challenging. I've got to be balanced as well. So. And maybe the one-to-ones would be a better way to go or do our online course which has got lots of great tips or um, read our book or just you know practice your own meditation and see what that what ideas that presents to you so thank you for listening and keep teaching children meditation thank you so much